Thanks, Joe. Um, my name is Lorraine McMorrow. I'm the BIM and Digital Construction Manager for the McAvoy Group. We are an off-site construction company based in Northern Ireland, but working across the UK and Ireland. My background is actually in architecture, and I worked as a project architect within the UK, specialising in healthcare and education. And then I moved back home and worked for Radigan Architects in Sligo uh, before making the move to the dark side of contracting maybe four or five years ago. Um, and to be honest, I haven't looked back because working for the McAvoy Group, it's a really innovative company. We do work in conjunction with academic universities. We've worked with Ulster University and David and the team. We've worked with Queen's. Um, and we work with the likes of Innovate UK and the MTC in the UK as well. So it allows me to kind of research and develop different processes and technologies and bring them back into the business. So in this presentation, I suppose I want to give a general overview of the McAvoy Group for people who maybe aren't familiar with the organisation, our journey into BIM and digital construction, and then using a case study of a recently completed Concordia Academy in the UK, how we've applied these processes and digital technologies, what we've learned, the good, the bad and the ugly. So the McAvoy Group, we are, as I said, one of the leading specialists in off-site construction within Ireland and the UK. We're really proud that we are still um, an independent family-owned business, still run by the McAvoys themselves. We have over 200 employees based in Northern Ireland, Dublin and Oxford in London. And we deliver high quality projects for the past 50 years, uh, predominantly in education, maybe 80% of our work is in education, but we also do healthcare commercial infrastructure and last year we made our move into housing and we have our first project in Northern Ireland that will be finishing um, a residential unit of 40 different types of units um, in Carrick Fergus, Northern Ireland. So we were the first off-site specialist to achieve BIM Level 2 accreditation with the BRE um, and from that I suppose BIM and digital construction has kind of acted as a catalyst within our organisation to um, move on our digital agenda and it really has been a core focus and the strength of that has been that it has been implemented from our MD down. So our board and our senior management really <coughs> buy into BIM and digital construction and that has really helped myself, David Clark and a few others to really embed this kind of change and behavioural change within the organisation. And I think without that, if we were trying to push from the bottom up in the organisation, it would have been very difficult. Um, in the last few years, we've won a number of awards that we're really proud of. We were um, named BIM Contractor of the Year earlier this year in February, I think, over in Newcastle. And we were delighted because we were up against some of the really big contractors like Skanska um, in England. So we were delighted that a small company in Northern Ireland was really um, delivering. So what do we do and how do we do it? Um, this is a picture actually of Concordia, the case study I'm going to talk about later. Um, there are numerous different ways of off-site construction or MMC construction. Our preferred solution is volumetric modular construction. And what we create are a series of modules, and you can see them here, these blue boxes. We create these in our factories in Lisburn and Dungannon. Um, they are bespoke shapes and sizes ranging from probably about 3.6 metres wide to 4 metres high and up to 16.5 metres long. Um, and we transport them all over the UK and Ireland. Um, the modules are 80%, up to about 80% complete. These modules, unfortunately, don't have the render finish that most of them do. That was just a requirement of the program on this project. But typically, our modules would have the brick slip finish or cladding or render finish, and it would just be the joins in that are completed on site. Um, but first fix mechanical and electrical installation would be um, completed in our factories and then the subcontractors follow the modules over to the UK or down to the Republic of Ireland um, and it's just the connections between modules that are completed. So to give you a high level overview of some of our projects, I think off-site construction and modular construction get a really bad rep. Um, people seem to think that we produce sad looking grey hemsec clad buildings but I think these show what we're actually producing. Um, and there's a number of our competitors in the UK as well that are delivering quality buildings. So this is Lynch Hill Enterprise Academy. Um, 
It is one of the largest um, modular education buildings delivered in the UK for 1,140 students. It cost about 20 million um, and was delivered on site within 61 weeks for handover. And that was delivered 17 <coughs> weeks ahead of the contract programme as well. Um, moving into healthcare, this is a project we've recently just handed over at the beginning of the summer. So Northumbria Specialist Emergency Care Centre. Um, it was an extension, so you can see the construction here. It was just an extension to an existing hospital within a live um, environment. And the wing that we were replicating had to replicate the existing um, building. So you can see these kind of florets and faca faceted facades. Um, and I think that just shows that off-site construction doesn't have limitations within design. Um, it's a three-storey ambulatory care unit built for £15 million. We've fitted out the first floor um, and we've now been appointed to fit out the ground and second floor as well. And that took 52 weeks to deliver. And then closer to home, last year we handed over a new passenger boarding zone at Dublin Airport. Um, it's one of Europe's fastest growing airports and to accommodate this demand, an off-site solution was sought to deliver for Dublin Airport Authority. Um, the project pushed the boundaries of innovation and engineering and off-site construction um, due to the uninterrupted um, span. It's a 20 metre wide facility um, and we believe that's the largest um, single span facility created in modular construction within the UK and Ireland. Um, and again, this was handed over, I think, 16 months, including planning, design, build and handover. So the McAvoy's BIM digital journey, before we even really understood or knew what BIM was or it was a buzzword, we were creating all <coughs> our um, design information within 3D and we use ArchiCAD internally. Then as the design team progressed and developed, we brought in-house our steel structure. All our modules are made with steel structures um, and we started using Tecla. And then for our 2D panel systems, for our wall panels um, or our roof and floor cassettes, we started using MyTech Wood Engine. So within a few years, we had a small design team using three different um, software providers. So it was critical for us to implement Open BIM and common standards, methods and procedures, just so that we could talk internally with our design models. Um, so we started looking to the UK government and the BS 1192 and PAS 1192 suite of documents. We were sponsored by our senior management on board to go and develop our BIM um, implementation plan. We worked with Pentagon Solutions in Belfast to do a gap analysis on the organisation to see what was our strengths, what was our weaknesses, what we needed to work on. And the following year, ahead of the UK mandate, we received our BIM Level 2 accreditation from the BRE. So that's a three-year accreditation, and then every year we're annually audited by the BRE. They come over and they make sure that we have current standards, methods and procedures. But more importantly, and I suppose the BRE differs a wee bit to other um, certification bodies in that they actually... Um, review to make sure that we're implementing these standards, methods and procedures on our projects, that we're not just saying we have these, we're actually doing what we say we do. So this year we're transitioning to the new ISO standards in collaboration with the BRE as well. And then I suppose further on our journey, this has led us to collaborate and develop partnerships with academics um, and the Innovate UK projects that I talked about earlier. So unfortunately it's already been asked this morning. I haven't included in any slides on our new project, the Seismic, but if you want any more information, come and talk to me afterwards. It's a collaborative project that we're working with one of our competitors and a few other um, consultants over in the UK to develop a kind of common approach to modular construction. So the case study, this is Concordia Academy. This is the completed build that we handed over this year. Um, it's a four-storey primary school uh, for 630 students based in Mumford and Essex um, and this area was under huge um, strain to get uh, primary school places so off-site construction seemed like um, a no-brainer for the client who is the ESFA. So this is some of the internals of the building just to show you the quality um, of space 
I think if you were just shown those images, you wouldn't know whether it was traditional or modular construction. So the Concordia scheme has curriculum areas organised in clusters of three um, for each year group and with a linear band of classrooms either side of a central corridor. Um, the teaching spaces are designed to be flexible for future adaptation, allowing um, support future modes of curriculum delivery of advances in technology. Um, and you can see there that there was a large hall, there's 14 classrooms, full catering kitchen, activity rooms, small group learning spaces, staff room and admin offices. And this red image here you can see in the corridors we've created these kind of informal learning spaces which are just the breakout spaces um, in between each of the teaching blocks. Um, and they've been quite successful for some of the students that need kind of one-on-one -on -one, um, learning. And then the big hall, that was, this is a kind of hybrid solution. So while 94% of it, I think, is off-site construction, the atrium spaces and the halls are like a portal frame, portal steel frame, and then we've filled these with 2D panel systems. So digital construction for us, it's more than just um, software and 3D models. It's a process of how we deliver. Um, projects in the more, most efficient way and that's efficiencies for us but also efficiencies for our clients and design team. Um, BIM allows us to streamline processes, more effective collaboration as it forces you to collaborate from the start, um, better quality decisions and more informed decisions which is crucial for our clients. Um, what I think people don't appreciate about off-site construction is that the minute we start on site, we're also building in the factory, and we're not starting just with the ground floor, we're building the ground floor, the first floor, the second floor, all simultaneously. So as soon as we start on site, our design... Thanks, Joe. Um, critical to the success then, if we have a small internal design team of say 10, 15 people that are using three pieces of software, when we go to our external consultants, we are inundated with numerous pieces of software. So critical to our approach has been this open BIM approach where we don't care what software you use, just give us IFC standards. Um, and we use that information then to start to interrogate. So you can create the information in whatever software you want, just give, an, give it to us in an open file format. Then we can interrogate and we use Celebri for doing our geometry and data validation and any issues that come up in the model then we issue that back out in another open uh, format called BCF and that's almost like a 3D report that you can bring that BCF file into any authoring software um, and it'll bring you straight to the issues so we're not issuing PDFs and Excel sheets of all these coordination and clash detection issues it's um, an intelligent file and again then the designer can respond back to that and it's just a continuous loop until we're happy and satisfied with the deliverables. So 3D modelling, as I said we're using Archicad um, for enhanced collaboration, again clash detection between the modular structure and the m &E is always uh, critical for us. We pre-order our steel, so when it comes into the factory, we do not want to be drilling it just to get services through. So all that has to be coordinated before we order our steel and before we start in the factory. Um, why do we use Archicad? We've tested a number of different authoring softwares and working in practice and for another contractor, I've used different systems, but working in offsite construction, it is critical that the software we use is flexible and adaptable to our needs because while it's just a different construction method there are subtle differences in the way we design and build our modules and Archicad allows us that flexibility. Um, as well as that then if we are maybe tweaking the system and using slabs to create different objects within Archicad it allows us then to reclassify that object and data as required and then that allows us to intelligently schedule out whereas other software would not let you do that. Um, and data classification is um, critical for us. Um, another really nice feature of Archicad is the Publish Manager. Um, the guys now have a template for Archicad set up that they do not even have to think of what they're naming their sheets. It's all automatically um, linked. So they just create their sheets and it's named directly from the BS 1192 standard for them. Um, 
BIMX files. I don't know if anyone's used these. These are a direct export from Archicad. You do not need any high-tech technology or hardware or software to use it. So we can literally send a BIMX file to our client and they can start to interrogate the model. And this is kind of what it looks like, where you can overlay the 2D sheets on top of the 3D model to understand the design <coughs> proposals. And you can do that in your own time at your own leisure. Um, and then a huge one for me and causes me pain on every project is interoperability. And other software systems say they can give you comprehensive IFCs, but I still have issues three or four years after we've implemented this process. And what I like about Archicad is it does give you a proper IFC that has the geometry in it, but more importantly has the data in it. And I haven't found another software system that can actually match it with regards to data. Um, as I was speaking about the offsite construction process and the speed at which we design to, if we had six to 12 weeks to complete our design process, that would be a luxury for us. So we have to make sure that we automate and schedule as much as possible. And one of the my favorite functions within Archicad is the use of graphic overrides. So if we have objects, walls, doors, um, <coughs> floors, and we are putting intelligent information into those objects, like telling that door it's a fire rated 60 minute door, we can use graphic overrides then to tag that automatically within the fire strategy layouts. If we are telling it what wall finish that is or what cladding system is on that within the properties using data, um, we can all automatically start to schedule all this out. And the beauty of that then is if we make any amendments to a wall type that it has to change from a non-fire rated wall to a 60 minute fire rated wall, if you're doing that once and doing it within the properties, all your layout sheets automatically update. And this ensures and reduces the risk of issues later on down the line. Whereas some practices I've worked in, you're manually marking up your um, drawings. Um, so that could be missed later on if you don't manually go back then and amend your fire layout drawings. And that's critical. Um, and you can see all our wall types have a different color. So then on the layout sheets, that color corresponds with the wall types. So the factory boys know exactly what wall type it is. Um, twin motion as well. Archicad 23 was just released last week. Um, and the design team are extremely excited about this dynamic new link with twin motion, which allows for photorealistic renderings. Um, and it's really quick as well. And then the biggest thing for us with Archicad was collaboration. Archicad has a number of direct live links between itself and other software that we use. And this has been critical to a successful process for us. So one of those links is we use Fusor for our VR technology um, software application. And we also use that for doing our 4D um, sequencing. So I can now have a one click link from Archicad straight into Fusor through a plugin. And then when I'm in Archicad and Fusor, if I make any changes within Fusor, I can request a sync back to Archicad and it'll update my model and vice versa. So you get that dynamic link back and forth. So when we have the client, so this is an internal from our Northumbria hospital. When I have the client in VR, if they request a change, I can make that change straight away while they have the headset on. If they approve it there and then, I save it and sync it back to the Archicad model. So I don't need to go back to my design team and say, update this model and duplicate our process. Um, so that's been really beneficial. And then when we have all these models in the IFC file format, we bring them directly into Celebri. And again, Archicad has a direct link with Celebri, um, but because we use a lot of external designers, we just request that everybody gives us, gives us the information within IFC. So I would take all the IFCs, I would federate them in Celebri, and you can start to run um, automatic and manual um, clash detection. And that was kind of the first stage of what we started using um, Celebri for was the clash detection and geometry. I'm going to speed up, sorry, I'm going on a bit. Um, but more importantly, and this year, we've really, really focused on data validation. If you have all these models, and I think Jerry was alluding to it earlier this morning, you have all these models, all this intelligent data. If you do not validate that data, it is no good to you. How, as a contractor, can we rely on the quantities, the schedules, 
um, of this data if we're not classifying our information correctly and if we're not checking that. Um, and this year was the first year we've ever been asked to deliver on Kobe. And again, Celebri has been critical to validating <coughs> that information. Um, and we've had to go back and back to our designers to make sure that information is correct before we can issue to the client. So then in construction, how do we use this information? All the guys in the factory use tablets and use their phone. They have access to the 3D models. They can mark up the models and that goes directly back to our design team, which while it's the factory, it's just next door, it's just a live link. So our designers can update if they make any changes in the factory. Um, it's a critical tool for communication. Even though our factory operatives are really experienced and understand the process, if they can visually see something, they just get it straight away. And again, with our supply chain, if we're talking about 4D sequencing um, or our install team for um, creating the installation plan as to how we'll install these modules on site. Um, and that data then from our models can feed directly into our CNC machines. It, um, creates optimization and reduces waste. So this is just some of the images from Concordia. The first two there on the far side are the modules being um, fabricated within our factory. So you can see the first fix m &E is there. Then the next image shows it being um, transported to site and it's about to be craned into place. And the last image is most of the modules installed on site. Um, and there were 67 modules installed within 12 days and then three days after that the building was watertight um, and you can see it's in a high-rise um, built-up area so those modules were installed in two weeks and one of the residents overlooking the site had actually gone on holidays when he came back um, there was a four-story school in his backyard and he actually rang the local authority complaining because he didn't realize this school was going to be um, in his garden so it just shows you the speed at what we work to. Um, and that's just the client's perspective. The head teacher mm -hmm. from Concordia mm -hmm. Academy, um, I suppose just praising the quality of the spaces. And even after we've handed over now, he allows us to bring in clients, potential clients to see the school and understand the spaces. <coughs> and I think we've had a few from um, the department here in Ireland over to look at the school. And I suppose that's me. Um, digital technology and processes has provided greater transparency and certainty of our projects, as well as flexibility to deliver sizes and configurations to meet um, the precise needs of the project and our clients. And in light of the challenges faced in our industry, exploring new ways of working and how best to incorporate new technologies and approaches into the industry is key. These ad adaptations are also vital if we hope to make construction an attractive career option for the likes of Luke and Ryan who were talking to us this morning. Um, and I think we really need to jump on board with this if we're to encourage um, the new workforce to come and join our industry. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>